Next month, uh, our breakfast will be back here at the Georgian Club on Wednesday, February 17th. And we're very excited to have Judge Michael Boggs, who is on the Georgia Court of Appeals. But more importantly, for the last four years, he has been the co-chairman of the Governor's Criminal Justice Reform Council, which, as you know, uh, has proposed and the General Assembly has implemented nearly all of those recommendations over the last four years, making Georgia one of the great leaders in criminal justice reform in the nation. I mean, we are getting fantastic national press. Although Texas was one of the early leaders, Georgia is, is more frequently mentioned even than Texas because of how far we've gone with this effort. Judge Boggs is a key part of that. He, he's very articulate, very well-spoken, very passionate and knowledgeable about this issue. So if you want to learn more about what, what we've done and what we are doing in Georgia, I think you'll really enjoy next month's breakfast. You can sign up on our website. I wanted to give you a real brief legislative update. You know, this early part of the legislative session, it's like the beginning of college football season. Everybody's team is undefeated. So we're all excited about all our issues. And some of them are going to survive and get passed, and, and some of them undoubtedly will not. But right now, they're all alive. And I'm going to start out with, with two bills that are sponsored by two of our speakers uh, that I think you'll hear about. One is uh, right to try legislation. Many states have passed this bill. Representative Dudgeon has sponsored it. We hope that's going to pass this year. It gives people with terminal illness the ability to try a drug that is through the late stages of FDA approval, but has not yet been approved by the FDA. Uh, it's a great opportunity for these individuals who really don't have uh, much hope uh, and gives them an opportunity to try this perhaps life-saving medication. The second one was in the news yesterday. Uh, Georgia is one of only two states that is the, are, get the dubious honor of being the most regulated uh, in the nation in terms of beer sales. And I know Kyle Wingfield has, has written about this in the AJC. It's just ridiculous. And uh, Senator Hill has had legislation last year that passed, although it was watered down by the special interest. It did pass, but then it was gutted by the regulatory authorities. Uh, the, the speaker and David Schaefer spoke up, and there was a compromise to basically roll back some of those onerous regulations. Unfortunately, we still are going to be uh, next to last in the country in terms of our regulations. You know, that's the power of the special interest, but it uh, is something that is a, a small victory, and hopefully we can continue working on uh, this overregulation in our state as we go forward. Speaking of criminal justice reform, the council has another set of recommendations that Judge Boggs is going to be talking about. Uh, in addition to that, there's a bill that's been dropped on civil asset forfeiture, something that uh, we and the Heritage Foundation and many other organizations uh, have really promoted. And uh, I don't know if that has much of a political chance, but uh, we'll see, never say never. And something that really is something we focused on for really for 25 years and is now getting more attention is professional licensing reform. Uh, the Obama administration actually agrees with us now. It's a real barrier to entry to a lot of low entry jobs. And the Supreme Court last year ruled in a North Carolina case that uh, it is against uh, antitrust and, and there's some trade infractions with allowing just members of a certain profession to regulate their own profession. And they overturned uh, one of the licensing boards in North Carolina, which puts a lot of our boards, which are regulated the same way, in a similar danger of being overturned. So hopefully that might spur some action on professional licensing this year. Transportation is not going to dominate like it did last year, but uh, the focus is going to be really on transit, what kind of transit do we need, how we're going to pay for it. And health care is always a big issue. We have really focused, we, we are opposed to Medicaid expansion, but we're not opposed to providing better access to health care, and we have put together a market-oriented way to do that. It requires some work on the, f the federal and help from the federal government, but also there's some things at the state level that we can do. There's going to be a bill that's going to be introduced today or tomorrow that incorporates some of those things, and one of those is direct primary care, which is otherwise known as how we used to pay for health care. It allows a patient and a doctor to independently contract for services. It's not insurance, 
but it gives you great access to care to a doctor even after hours, would eliminate or reduce trips to the emergency room, provides a way to encourage technology. The technology that's available now on your phone uh, is revolutionizing healthcare, but sometimes insurance companies and government uh, overregulate that, so it's not growing. We have a great opportunity to be an innovator here in Georgia with the leadership we have in mobile devices and internet security, health IT, financial payment processing, really great opportunity for us. So hopefully we can take that first step providing a positive solution on health care. I just noticed that you know the hosp rural hospital in my hometown in LJ uh, is having financial problems, just one of many. So th there is a need out there, but we believe expanding a failed program will just put that off for another few years. We need a better solution. I think Georgia can be a leader in that area. And finally, tax reform. You know, that's something we've been working on since 2010, since the Tax Council uh, was created. Christine Reese from Georgia Tech is here. She was a member of that council. A lot of unfinished business to do. Uh, as part of the transportation bill, we were promised that a tax reform council would be created. We hope to see that uh, meet and discuss reducing our personal income tax, which really was the focus of that uh, effort. There's a bill that's been introduced, which I think is a, a good start, which would re reduce our income tax rate by 10%. Uh, so hopefully we will do something. Uh, it, more importantly, we need to get below North Carolina, which has gone from seven and three quarters percent down to less than five and a half percent on their income tax, and now uh, really puts competitive pressure on Georgia to respond, and I know that our two speakers today are great tax reform champions, so it's, it's not because of a lack of effort on their parts. And finally, donor, donor privacy, it's something we don't want to see uh, invaded. There was a bill last year that would uh, force disclosure of nonprofits of their, of their donors. Uh, we believe in transparency and government spending, but privacy for donors, uh, so they cannot be intimidated for the, the causes that they support. So hopefully we won't be seeing that legislation.